Hello, good evening, welcome to St Mary's Halesworth. It's six o'clock on Wednesday, the 27th of September. Lesser Festival of Vincent de Paul. I'm reading evening prayer on Wednesday in ordinary time from the Church of England Common Worship. You'll find the words in the book towards the beginning after prayer during the day in the morning and evening prayer during ordinary time section, evening prayer on Wednesday. Also in the book, you might like to look up 27th of September, halfway through amongst the saints' days and festivals to pick up on the adjustments for it being Vincent de Paul's day. Opening and closing refrain for the Song of Mary when we get there, and you'll be able to read the collect if you look that up. The words are also available at the Church of England's website and at Reva's Daily Prayer, downloadable as app for Apple or Android device. You may join with us in person, 8 and 6, Tuesday to Saturday, doing this. Zoom meeting set up. Codes are on the Blythe Church's website and Facebook page. We're live streaming on Facebook and the audio will appear on my Dominic Doble YouTube channel presently. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. A song of God's descending. I love you, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my crag, my fortress and my deliverer. In my distress I called upon the Lord and cried out to my God for help. He heard my voice in his temple and my cry came to his ears. He parted the heavens and came down and thick darkness was under his feet. He rode upon the cherubim and flew. He came flying on the wings of the wind. He made darkness his covering round about him, dark waters and thick clouds his pavilion. From the brightness of his presence through the clouds burst hailstones and coals of fire. The Lord also thundered out of heaven. The Most High uttered his voice with hailstones and coals of fire. For you will save a lowly people and bring down the high looks of the proud. You also shall light my candle, The Lord my God shall make my darkness to be bright. As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried in the fire. He is a shield to all who trust in him. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. The uh, psalmody appointed this evening, numbers 59, 60 and 67. You'll find the Psalter at the back of the book. Psalms 59, 60 and 67. You, O Lord, are my strong tower. Rescue me from my enemies, O my God. Set me high above those that rise up against me. Save me from the evildoers, and from murderous foes deliver me. For see how they lie in wait for my soul, and the mighty stir up trouble against me. Not for any fault or sin of mine, O Lord. For no offence they run and prepare themselves for war. Rouse yourself, come to my aid, and see. For you are the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel. Awake and judge all the nations. Show no mercy to the evil traitors. They return at nightfall and snarl like dogs, and prowl about the city. They pour out evil words with their mouths, swords are on their lips, for who they say can hear us. But you laugh at them, O Lord, you hold all the nations in derision. For you, O my strength, will I watch. You, O God, are my strong tower. My God in his steadfast love will come to me. He will let me behold the downfall of my enemies. Slay them not, lest my people forget. Send them reeling by your might, and bring them down, O Lord, our shield. For the sins of their mouth, for the words of their lips, let them be taken in their pride. For the cursing and falsehood they have uttered, consume them in wrath, consume them till they are no more. And they shall know that God rules in Jacob, and to the ends of the earth. And still they return as nightfall, and snarl like dogs, and prowl about the city. 
though they forage for something to devour, and howl if they are not filled. Yet will I sing of your strength, and every morning praise your steadfast love. For you have been my stronghold, my refuge in the day of my trouble. To you, O my strength, will I sing. For you, O God, are my refuge, my God of steadfast love. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. You, O God, are my strong tower. Restore us again, O God, our Saviour. O God, you have cast us off and broken us. You have been angry. Restore us to yourself again. You have shaken the earth and torn it apart. Heal its wounds, for it trembles. You have made your people drink bitter things. We reel from the deadly wine you have given us. You have made those who fear you to flee, to escape from the range of the bow. That your beloved may be delivered. Save us by your right hand and answer us. God has spoken in his holiness. I will triumph and divide Shechem and share out the valley of Succoth. Gilead is mine and Manasseh is mine. Ephraim is my helmet and Judah my scepter. Moab shall be my washpot. Over Edom will I cast my sandal. Across Philistia will I shout in triumph. Who will lead me into the strong city? Who will bring me into Edom? Have you not cast us off, O God? Will you no longer go forth with our troops? Grant us your help against the enemy, for earthly help is in vain. Through God we will do great acts, for it is he that shall tread down our enemies. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Restore us again, O God, our Saviour. God be gracious to us and bless us, and make his face to shine upon us, that your name may be known upon earth, your saving power among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God, let all the peoples praise you. O let the nations rejoice and be glad, for you will judge the peoples righteously and govern the nations upon earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God, let all the peoples praise you. Then shall the earth bring forth her increase, and God our own God will bless us. God will bless us and all the ends of the earth shall fear him. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Scrolling past our first reading, following electronically turning back in our books to evening prayer on Wednesday, ordinary time, to the Song of the Blessed. Rejoice and be glad, for you are the light of the world, and great is your reward in heaven. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, <coughs> for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. And blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers. For they shall be called children of God. Blessed are those who suffer persecution for righteousness' sake. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Rejoice and be glad, for you are the light of the world, and great is your reward in heaven. This from Kindle edition of Celebrating the Saints, a reading from a letter of Vincent to Paul. We should not judge the poor by their clothes and their outward appearance, nor by their mental capacity, since they are often ignorant and uncouth. On the contrary, if you consider the poor in the light of faith, then you will see that they take the place of God the Son, who chose to be poor. Indeed, in his passion, having lost even his basic human dignity, regarded as foolishness by the Gentiles and a scandal by the Jews, he showed he was to preach the gospel to the poor in these words. He has sent me to preach good news to the poor. Therefore, we should be of the same mind and should imitate what Christ did, caring for the poor, consoling them, helping them, and guiding them. Christ chose to be born in poverty and called his disciples from among the ranks of the poor. He himself became the servant of the poor and to share their condition that whatever good or harm was done to the poor, he said he would consider done to himself. Since God loves the poor, he also loves the lovers of the poor. When you love another person, you also love those who love or serve that person as well. So we too hope that God will love us on account of the poor. We visit them, then we strive to concern ourselves with the weak and needy. We so share their sufferings that with the Apostle Paul we feel we have become all things to all people. Therefore we must strive to be deeply involved in the cares and sorrows of our neighbour and pray to God to inspire us with compassion and pity, filling our hearts and keeping them full. 
the service of the poor is to be preferred to all else and to be performed without delay. If at a time set aside for prayer, medicine or help has to be brought to some poor person, go and do what has to be done with an easy mind, offering it up to God as a prayer. Do not be put out by uneasiness or a sense of sin because of prayers interrupted by the service of the poor. For God is not neglected if prayers are put aside, if the work of God is interrupted in order that another work may be completed. Therefore, when you leave prayer to help some poor, remember this, <clears throat> that the work has been done for God. Charity takes precedence over all rules. Everything ought to tend to it, since it is itself a great lady. What it offers, should, orders should be carried out. Let us show our service to the poor, then, with renewed ardour in our hearts, seeking out in particular any destitute people, since they are given to us as lords and patrons. 1 Kings 17, our first Bible reading. Kings is in the history section of the Hebrew Scripture, so if you're following the Holy Bible, open it about a quarter of the way in, and uh, you will find 1 Kings there. We are looking for the first book of Kings and the 17th chapter, so within 1 Kings, the large number 17 at the head of the paragraph, in the margin, that's chapter 17. Scroll back to it from the canticle you read a moment ago if you're following online. Now Elijah the Tishbite of Tishbi in Gilead said to Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel lives before whom I stand, there shall be neither dew nor rain these years except by my word. The word of the Lord came to him, saying, Go from here and turn eastward, and hide yourself by the wadi Cherith, which is east of the Jordan. You shall drink from the wadi, and I have commanded the ravens to feed you there. So he went and did according to the word of the Lord. He went and lived by the wadi Cherith, which is east of the Jordan. The ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning, and bread and meat in the evening, and he drank from the wadi, but after a while the wadi dried up, because there was no rain in the land. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Go now to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and live there, for I have commanded a widow there to feed you. So he set out and went to Zarephath. When he came to the gate of the town, a widow was there gathering sticks. He called her and said, Bring me a little water in a vessel, so that I may drink. As he was going to bring it, he called her and said, Bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. But she said, As the Lord your God lives, I have nothing baked, only a handful of meal in a jar and a little oil in a jug. I am now gathering a couple of sticks, so that I may go home and prepare it to myself and my son, that we may eat it and die. Elijah said to her, Do not be afraid, go and do as you have said, but first make me a little cake of it and bring it to me, and afterwards make something for yourself and for your son. For thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, the jar of meal will not be emptied, and the jug of oil will not fail until the day that the Lord sends rain on the earth. She went and did as Elijah said, so that she, as well as he and her household, ate for many days. The jar of meal was not emptied, neither did the jug of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord that he spoke by Elijah. After this, the son of the woman, the mistress of the house, became ill. His illness was so severe that there was no breath left in him. She then said to Elijah, What have you against me, O man of God? You have become to me to you have come to me to bring my sin to remembrance, and to cause the death of my son. But he said to her, Give me your son. He took him from her bosom, carried him up into the upper chamber where he was lodging, laid him on his own bed. He cried out to the Lord, O Lord my God, have you brought calamity even upon the widow with whom I am staying by killing her son? Then he stretched himself upon the child three times and cried out to the Lord, O Lord my God, let this child's life come into him again. The Lord listened to the voice of Elijah, the life of the child came into him again, and he revived. Elijah took the child, brought him down from the upper chamber into the house, and gave him to his mother. Then Elijah said, See, your son is alive. So the woman said to Elijah, Now I know that you are a man of God, and that the word of the Lord is in your, ma in your mouth is truth. So, not atypically, God has asked a prophet to go to the king and say, um, because you're not living right, the rain's going to cease uh, till I tell them to come back again. <clears throat> so, uh, Elijah is God's man, God incarnate at the time, and uh, God's voice, God's presence. And uh, he goes to the king uh, and says there's not going to be rain. But God has told him to go to a place where there was water, so he goes there. The birds bring him food. When the water runs out, he's told to go to Zarephath, where he finds a widow. She asks her to cook something for him, and she says, well, I'm just gathering some sticks to cook a meal for my son and me, and then we're going to die. And he says, well, make something for me too, and if you do that, all will be well, and uh, your food will not run out. So she does, and it doesn't, but then her son becomes ill and dies, and uh, Elijah somewhat bizarrely lies on top of him and prays for him and revives him and uh, they are restored so here we've got a king who's ruling poorly and therefore it has an effect on the weather we've got a climate conference at the end of this week we're not living as god would have us live we're not living as science would direct us 
so our weather systems are broken. If we live right before God, the ancient Hebrew principle, then God will bring us rain in due season. And uh, it affects all of us. It affects the church when things go awry. And uh, sometimes God makes miraculous provision for us, for some, and sometimes God doesn't. But the story here, Elijah is miraculously provided for. And whether this, this is seen as literal or metaphorical, if we are generous, then it will be better for us than if we are um, protective and prejudiced and fearful. Uh, think of the feeding of 5,000. Was that a miracle of creation? Was it a miracle of uh, generosity? This woman would have just had her little and then died. But as it is, she has life in sharing, uh, whether we see this as a miracle or whether we see this as a metaphor. If we in fear as the church, if we in fear as the English, the United Kingdom and Northern Ireland, close our borders, prevent trade, um, reopen our fossil fuel reserves, etc. We will make things worse for ourselves rather than better if we had faith and hope and trust. And even when we are generous and God is providing for us oil and bread, use in the temple, so there's another idea, suggestion, this is metaphorical rather than literal, it's temple worship. We are being sustained as God's people in the desert, by, in the wilderness, by manna and by water gushing from the rock. It's the Saviour, the Holy Spirit, as we Christians would understand that, the oil also, Holy Spirit. Um, so that's the sacrament of bread, the meal, and the Holy Spirit being with us to sustain and encourage us. Even then, things may not go well with us and people may die. Things may be taken from us. But in faith, perhaps if we pray, they may be restored. Second reading, Acts 20 from 1 to 16. Acts is um, a few books into the Second Covenant. So if you're following printed Holy Bible, turn to two-thirds of the way through, move towards the back. And after the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, you will find Acts. Within Acts, we're looking for the large number 20 at the head of the paragraph, the chapter number 20, and within Acts 20 verses, small numbers in the text, 1 to 16. Acts 20 from 1 to 16, scroll onto it if you're following electronically. After the uproar had ceased, Paul sent for the disciples, and after encouraging them and saying farewell, he left Macedonia. When he had gone through those regions and had given the believers much encouragement, he came to Greece, where he stayed for three months. He was about to set sail for Syria when a plot was made against him by the Jews, so he decided to return through Macedonia. He was accompanied by Sopater, son of Pyrrhus from Berea, by Aristarchus and Secundus from Thessalonica, by Gaius from Derby and Timothy, as well as Tychicus and Trophimus from Asia. They went ahead and were waiting for us in Troas, but we sailed from Philippi after the days of unleavened bread. In five days we joined them in Troas, where we stayed for seven days. On the first day of the week, when we met to break bread, Paul was holding discussion with them since he intended to leave the next day. He continued speaking until midnight. There were many lamps in the room upstairs where we were meeting. A young man named Eutychus, who was sitting in the window, began to sink off into a deep sleep while Paul talked still longer. Overcome by sleep, he fell to the ground three floors below and was picked up dead. But Paul went down and, bending over him, took him in his arms and said, Do not be alarmed, for his life is in him. Then Paul went upstairs, and after he had broken bread and eaten, he continued to converse with them until dawn. Then he left. Meanwhile... He had taken the boy away alive. They had taken the boy away alive and were not a little comforted. We went ahead to the ship and set sail for Assos, intending to take Paul on board there, for he had made this arrangement, intending to go by land himself. When he met us at Assos, we took him on board and went to Mytilene. We sailed from there, and on the following day we arrived opposite Chaos. Chaos. The next day we touched at Samos, and the day after we came to Miletus, for Paul had decided to set sail past Ephesus so that he might not have to spend time in Asia. He was eager to be in Jerusalem, if possible, on the day of Pentecost. So, fairly frenzied joining of dots. Find those places on a map and draw your line round and through. Or look it up in the Bible. It's got maps in it, if you've got one of those kind of extended or study Bibles with maps of Paul's journeys included. And uh, some of these places you recognise and some of them we don't. Um, some of these people named we recognise and some of them we don't. Uh, Timothy, for example, letters to Timothy. Um, he wants to avoid Ephesus, so he's not having to spend time in Asia because he wants to get back to Jerusalem. But uh, some of these places, he must have just spent a little bit of time, a few days, and gone on. Um, I don't recognise. 
ASOS, Mitylene. He's uh, in Troas, where he talks into the night. And whilst we've got this sort of frenzied journeying, we've then got this paragraph of him teaching, preaching, talking into the night. Somebody falls from window, d dies on hitting the ground, but is restored to life and is taken away alive. He continues to talk until dawn and then leaves. This is an example of the um, hunger that the people in that place had for Paul's teaching. And uh, I like the names of that in that first paragraph, telling us that uh, names of people and where they're from. And again, Thessalonica, we know where that is. Uh, Timothy from Asia, which I guess is effectively um, Ephesus, if we read that last paragraph and make those connections. So we are pilgrim people. We might be associated with a number of different places. We might have jobs and tasks to do throughout the day, throughout our week, in different places, at home, with family, at church. And uh, we need to be wise to balance our time. And if there is a time and a moment where we need to be present for a while, we need to be in that and uh, maybe make sure that people don't fall asleep and fall out the window while the sermon is going on for too long. But uh, be encouraged a bit like in our first reading where there was a death whilst God's work was being done. There was a death here while God's work is being done, but there is a restoration. Even when things are going well, things can go awry. But let us call on those who lead. Let us call on God's grace to make restoration. Let us not be too busy to stop and wait and learn. To the responsory back in evening prayer on Wednesday in ordinary time. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel and afterwards receive me with glory. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel and afterwards receive me with glory. For I am always with you. You hold me by my right hand and afterwards receive me with glory. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel and afterwards receive me with glory. The Song of Mary. Uh, the refrain it's um, common of apostles, I should imagine, or something like. So if you are following the book, you might like to look up 27th of September. Um, Jean de Paul, and uh, look that up. Otherwise, uh, just join in at my soul proclaims. I'm saying Jean de Paul. No, Vincent de Paul. Jean just sounded a bit French. Vincent de Paul. So uh, the Song of Mary. You have left all things and followed me. You'll be rewarded a hundred times over and gain eternal life. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Saviour. He has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm and has scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel, to remember his promise of mercy, the promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. You have left all things and followed me. You will be rewarded a hundred times over and gain eternal life. Source, Sun, Essence, one in three, three in one. We come to you at the end of this day and we thank you for all the good you've done in it, despite us, through us. For those moments that we have experienced your presence where we have used our skills and talents, God-given, to uh, impress, to be fruitful, that, to others' uh, gratitude and to our own satisfaction. <clears throat> we might have rested or been creative. And so we feel fulfilled and uh, grateful as we look back at those memories and we thank you for that. But we might feel broken, excluded and hurting at the end of the day if we look back to moments where we've been misunderstood, bullied, abused, struggled with addiction, mental health, had bad news, been brought low, made mistakes. And so if that's been our experience, we come to you at the end of the day for your healing, your restoration, your provision and protection. From Release International, we pray for the family and friends of Jeremiah Mwanga, age 24, a student at Uganda Christian School of Professional, Professionals in northern Uganda, he was killed in his room after sharing about Christ with Muslims.
from Christian Aid. We pray for the loss and damage campaign in Scotland and for supporters petitioning their MSPs. The Joint Public Issues Team prayer for Ukraine includes the line to be mourn every casualty of, I will include every conflict, every precious life extinguished by war, both in Ukraine and anywhere where people are brutalised by military regimes or power. Diocesan prayer cycle, we pray first for our bishops Martin and Michael, say for Archdeacon Rich and Rural Dean Josh, and we pray blessing on the uh, deanery chapter to take place here on Tuesday next, uh, Tuesday week, and uh, we ask God's blessing on um, Sax Munden with Kelsale come Carlton, and lead clergy there David and Nick with the lay pioneer Tom, pray God's blessing on them as they work for you, uh, may they recognise the uh, extent of your grace and uh, work with a view and a hope to your provision, uh, even in the challenges of our day. We pray for chaplains to uniform organisation for young people, um, including um, the Air Force, the Army and uh, sea cadets across our county. And those who might support uh, the scouting organisations and the guides and others like Boys Brigades, St John's Ambulance. We pray that they will be able to develop relationships such that people recognise that there is a God and that there is a supportive network through which and in which, alongside which, they may thrive and grow. And we pray for Bishop Vithalis, who is possibly diocesan at uh, Biharamulo Diocese, one of our dioceses in, uh, I think, North East Africa. We pray for our places today for the people and businesses associated with the addresses of Beckles Road, Southwold Road, The Street, Halton Road, Bungie Road, Blyford Lane, Sparrowbrook Road in Halton, and Blackheath Road, Bly Blythe Close, Back Lane, Oak Meadow Close, Church Lane, Coldview, Back Road, Coles Hill, Coldcroft, Blythe Lane, Hammers Walk in Weniston, Church Farm Road, Bridge Street, The Hill, Pitmans Grove, Edwards Lane, Low Road, Hurlsworth Road, Walpole Road, Thornton Road, Weniston Road in Bramfield, Southwold Road, Blyford Lane, Kings Lane in Blyford, and in Thorrington, Priory Lane, the Street, Fox Lane, Day Road, Fairfields, The Wash, Brussels Green, Wesselton Road, Willow March Lane, and Devil's Lane. <clears throat> Pray for the businesses and uh, yeah, businesses associated with those addresses, <clears throat> whether it's farming or hospitality or other, that uh, whether they serve them or are based there. That they will make the right decisions and see them through with their budgets for the year ahead. May they make enough to, to uh, balance their books. Pray a special blessing, although it's not in those addresses for our fishmonger just picked up this afternoon. Uh, Liz let me know that uh, they're stopping their shop, but going to be selling at markets. We pray that uh, business model will be more successful. And we pray for the people living in those addresses. Where things are hard, we pray that they will find the help they need. Where things are going well, may they be part of the answer and not the question. We pray a special blessing on Cynthia and Paul, Felicity, Maura, John, Ginny, Sheila, Richard, Margaret, Anna, Graham, Liz, Carol, Jean, Joan, Lynn, Linda, Ron, Peter, Francis, Janet. We thank you for the good news that Lynn's had today. And... Uh, we pray that you'll act in sovereign grace and give these people hope. Pray that you uh, help those who are helping them to say and do be the right thing at the right time. And do we pray for provision, whether it's health, wealth, income, relationship, work, accommodation. And we thank you for all the good in the lives of John and Eileen, Eric, Priest, Sylvia and Raymond, Evelyn, Kenneth, Pat, Rhoda, Adrian, all others who have recently died, including those who have died suddenly and unprepared through sickness, violence, neglect, accident, and those that have taken their own lives. So we remember Vincent de Paul. We give thanks for all his years mindful at this time. Ask that he may pray for us, that we may be um, well disposed to the poor as we preach the word in word and deed, as we live exemplary lives, that your reign may fall and refresh and nurture. We pray for those we've known and loved and seen no longer. Those are totally fated here. We ask that according to your promises to humanity, you grant us with them a share in your eternal kingdom. And uh, we pray for ourselves and all who mourn the loss of a loved one or a change in life chances. 
that we will hear your inspired words spoken through your incarnate mouth by the breath of your spirit, and that as we become aware of your presence and your word and your power, our storms will be stilled and we will be, find ourselves transported into the safety of your eternal haven. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Merciful God, whose servant Vincent de Paul, by his ministry of preaching and pastoral care, brought your love to the sick and the poor. Give to all your people a heart of compassion, that by word and action they may serve you in serving others in their need. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Goodbye to those joining us on Facebook and YouTube.